in this video I'm going to show you how I usually set up and structure my Django projects. Um, we're going to begin by first creating a folder which is just going to be my test um, Django project and then we can just cd into project. So we've done that and we've created a folder. The next thing I want to do is just set up a virtual environment. So this is I guess how you would traditionally set up a Django project. I'm going to call it tenv which is like a test env. Then we're going to activate it with the usual way. Next I just want to install Django in here. Install Django. So now we can do Django admin start project and I'm just going to call it my proj and then I'm going to do dot so I'm going to install it directly here. So we've got our manage.py file here you can see and then we've got um, like the normal Django setup where we've got settings, URLs and all that stuff in here. Now usually people create, or not usually, I guess sometimes people might create multiple um, apps. I don't really like to do that, I like to create one app which is API. Uh, you could make a case for having like a users app and an API app uh, and maybe even a payments app, I thought about this but anyway that's beside the point so I'm not going to do that yet. So I created this script actually in useful scripts which you can have access to uh, on my github, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but we're just gonna take a look at it. It's a very simple script and I'll show you how you can make it executable and whatnot. So this is pretty much how I like to structure my project. So we start by creating a new directory called API and I'll show you this in a second. And then we, nav we just navigate inside it and then inside there we uh, create a bunch of folders. And then inside those we just create the init files which if you're not familiar with it's basically just so you can import them and export them uh, these the code from these files elsewhere which I'll show you uh, and then additionally we create a urls.py and an admin.py if you copy and paste this code into a script you can call the script whatever you want but you do then need to make it executable and to do that you do chmod so u plus x you can just do plus x which basically you're just giving all rights for everything if it's you you're just doing it for your current user so by running this command right now you will make your script executable um, so you can use it so if we now go back into our django project let's clear everything to make it neater and what i want to do is essentially just run that script there you go I've executed that script and now we've got a folder or directory called API. We can navigate inside this and actually let's rather than doing that we can just open it with VS code. So code API. And I was really just going to talk about the structure. I don't really want to set everything up in this video. If you want to see me do a video where I properly set everything up, um, probably with Django cookie cutter, then I can do that too. Um, but essentially we now have our structure. So in here, so what you'd usually do then is for me, for example, I would create a um, profile model, right? So in here you'd have, I don't know, class profile and you do from like django.db import models I mean I'm not gonna actually write any code really and then you'd have like I don't know my you know I don't know but something here right equals something like that and then from here you do from dot profile import profile which is the model and to make it accessible elsewhere you'd kind of have it like this you know, I don't want to get carried away in details, but this is sort of what it would look like, right? And then you'd go in your serializer as well. Profile.py. So now, so essentially this is all you really do. Each folder basically has the matching, you know, you have a mod model, um, which matches the serializer. 
and I guess which even matches the tests and which matches the views. So each one of these um, would have a file called profile.py or whatever your model is called. Um, <clears throat> now of course it can be that you have different views, you can have additional views where you use multiple models of course, that's often the case. Um, but for me this is, so that's pretty much what it looks like. Now the difference is I would usually do this with cookie cutter which would actually require a few changes, you have to move some URLs around. But the reason I like this is because it's simple. I like it. Whenever you're writing code you know exactly sort of where your code needs to go and if you're debugging it more importantly like in a big project, a big sort of, you know, if you've got lots of employees or lots of people working with you, it's just so easy to get things done quickly. Because if you have something which is like sort of a service class, you know, something that's more general, that, you know, that isn't a model, it isn't a view, it's like a custom class, then you could have another folder which is sort of, I don't know, I wouldn't call it scripts, but you, you'd, you'd call it something else. But it does make it very neat. And actually on that point, uh, I really much prefer neatness to like reusability. I think that's very controversial. Like I do think it's important to write good code and obviously code is better if you're only writing it once. But I've worked in places where code is just so abstract that it becomes frustrating and I think it massively eats into dev time. For me, the best way to write code is to make it simple to develop rather than to make it the best feat of engineering ever created. Um, but this is just in terms of sort of reusability. Um, if you can make something that's usable and not too complex, it's okay, but it's when it becomes so abstract that you don't even know what the class itself does. I think that's when it becomes a problem. Um, if the class is a very sort of core function and you're just using that class often, then that's the correct way to use it. But if the class is sort of yeah, I mean, I keep using this sort of word if it's very generic and very abstract, and then I think it's a bit of I think it's a bit of a pain uh, sometimes. So I think this structure very much promotes sort of you know you have one thing that you want to implement, and you just have all these different places where you need to implement it. And I think that makes for really neat code. And I worked at a pretty big company actually that had had five dev teams and they were all working on the code base, same code base. Um, each dev team consisted of like five or six people and this was pretty much the structure they had and I, for me it's been the favorite structure I've sort of seen in a company. Uh, it worked very nicely. Um, so yeah, 